Hi, it's your boy it's Big Sal from AceToys.eu regarding the new outdoor wireless pan tilt um, PTZ dome security camera cord that uh, we are now supplying. Uh, I just thought to give you a quick demo. In fact, to be fair, we're giving you a full demo from opening box to installing. On your computer system uh, installing it configuring it so you just know how to use it straight out of the box obviously um, this is gonna take it might take a bit of time but uh, we'll push right through it so what do we get in the box as you can see let's crack it open it's a nice protective case um, see there's a set of drivers here which we'll come to later and I'm configuring power cable you can see that's a wireless aerial and the unit itself let's uh, get that out it's quite heavy it's heavier than I thought it would be it's quite interesting and good quality side so the unit now comprises of the standard um, cabling you normally would receive on these types of units it's um, a LAN cable there and a further remote and a reset button um, what you can't probably see I'm going to try and get it closer to you. Yes, you can. There's a beveled camera, which is beveled inside the unit. And there is, let's have a count. One, two, three, four, five, six. There's around 20 odd um, infrared lights there in order that you can catch uh, whoever you're looking to catch at night. You can see there's a various there's a bezel there where the unit goes on for the wireless okay so that's the unit let's uh, go on to install it hi it's your boy big sal from acetoys.eu quick uh, overall summary of your item that you purchased very point, a, point in, a very important point, uh, check the Wi-Fi antenna. This unit has to be firmly attached on top of the unit or else you will not get a Wi-Fi signal. So if it's spinning around, just make sure that it's connected at the base firmly or else you'll be playing around with IP configurations at a later stage and it's just merely the fact that your antenna is not uh, secured correctly. You'll be able to see the lens and the infrared LEDs which pick up your unit or whatever you're looking at over a night period. You'll also now be able to see clearly see the infrared cable uh, and the power switch and this is also the reset button. Okay. At this present stage, in order for us to go any further, you will need to install your camera. But prior to putting it on the wall, it's easier to install the camera via your router, and that's what I'm suggesting that we do. So connect your PC via a LAN cable to the back of your router, and also the cam to the back of your router. Once you've done that, Please move to the disk that you've purchased and install it. You will then get, once you put the disk in, you'll get this face. This will be the camera that you've just purchased. And if you click on this icon here, you will get the IP, it will get the IP camera user manual for this actual product. Look, you can spend as much time as you can to read it and familiarize yourself with it for the purposes of speed and this tutorial I'm going to move on. You then need to click on the search tool. 
This will then install the drivers for the search tool upon your computer. Upon finishing this, it will ask you to reboot your computer and you must also then do that. Once you've then reset your computer, you'll see the IP tool. This you will need to then, well this will identify the IP cameras that are in your current system. This is the IP camera that we're, we've just configured and uh, it will then give you a prompt in, in your Firefox or your browser and you just need to sign in. To sign in, the admin, it will be admin for your, your name and there will be no password. But as we've already configured this already, uh, it's just allowed us to get straight in. Let's go through the, the device management settings. The alias settings is the name of your camera. Uh, it should come up as anonymous on yours, but we've already given ours an IP cam name, which is 3. The date and time settings should be should co correlate with the uh, wireless box that you're using. The user settings, as I said previously, will normally be the user will be admin and the password would normally be uh, blank. Basic network settings is very important. This is how the cam will communicate wirely, what if it's wired or wirelessly with your router. Now we've given the IP address for the camera as 192.168.1. Now with yourselves you will need to configure the last two numbers or the last number. And we've called ours 13 but you can have your number any number within a, a small range 1 to 10 uh, normally works. Uh, no, next thing you need to configure is the submass netting which is always the same 255, 255.0 and the gateway is the address to your router which on our most standard boxes is 192.168.1.1 and the DSM server is also exactly the same. The port number we've configured uh, to number 83. You would then need to submit that and that will be your CAM setup. Uh, we'll go to wireless settings in a second but um, we're going to go through the mail serve service settings. This is how your CAM is able to co contact you if it is triggered at any point. Uh, basically the settings are your email address as a sender and also your email address as the receiver. The receiver 2, receiver 4, 3 and 4 can be other receivers as well. SMT, G, sorry, SMT server will be SMTP server, sorry, SMTP server dot gmail dot com and the SMT, SMTP port will always be 465 with a trans layer security protocol being TLS. You'll also need also you also need to click the authenticity button and oh, and um, the SMT user SMTP user is again your email address with your password being your password for your email address. This button here, report internet IP by mail, should also be clicked. You must first submit that and then give it a quick test. That will then email you saying that it succeeded and therefore that setting is up and running. Alarm setting, all you need to do if you want it to trigger your emails or your FTP service, what you would need to do is alarm it and tick that box there. We've noticed that these cameras are very very um, sensitive and they do take a few days to settle so if yours keeps going off straight away then put it to its lowest settings 
and either move it upwards or downwards according to the amount of times that it triggers. You then need to um, click on the button send notification by mail and upload an image on alarm. Uh, you might also need to configure this port, port here, this point here, upload intervals that's depending on the amount of frames it would seconds it will take whilst it captures a, an image of uh, whatever has detected it. There is also a schedule here, scheduler, which you can click on and you'll be able to identify what times of the day you want your alarm to be activated. Let's go to PTZ settings. PTZ settings really just stand for pan and tilt and zoom. That's it's a no-brainer. Uh, we've got this all down as the fastest settings because we've noticed that the cam actually works best with its fastest settings. However, if you're, you've got a blazing amount of um, data going through your internet service uh, from your internet service provider, you might need, you might be able to slow that down. Right. All importantly. Uh, the wireless LAN settings and I'm going to get on with that uh, now. Right, we've just clicked on wireless LAN settings and you need to click on this button here. Uh, once you click on this button here, your, it will scan your network and look for any wireless networks that are in your facility. You'll then need to scroll down and find out, find yours. It will automatically find the SSID, and then you'd need to uh, put in the, your level of encryption and your password. Once you've uh, inputted your password here, you will need to submit that, and your can will boot down for approximately 30 seconds and then reboot. You might have to refresh your browser, however it should just reboot on its own. After it's done that, uh, you should find that your camera will work wired or it will work wirelessly. As we can see now, you can see that um, the cam will move on its own. Great. Right, last part is that you will now have your camera working wirelessly. You will now have your camera working via your internet. Um, your internet wireless network. However, if you need to contact um, your cam from a distance it won't work and the reason why it won't work is that the IP address that um, you're using it needs to be port forwarded so what you would now need to do is get back to your router and port forward the same IP address for the camera and I'll show you how to do that quickly if you type into your browser um, 192.168.1.1 you will then get a look for port forwarding or port triggering. This is most commonly on, it will be on most um, net, most boxes and therefore you, if your box is different from this, just keep looking around you'll find it. Right, what you then need to do is let's have a look, add a custom service. I ask you to put in your password which we've done. You will then need to put in your server address for the cam, which you will know with regarding this one was 13 and the port which was 83 and 8 and the ending port will be exactly the same. And you'll be able to see that that is there. Once you've done that you add it to your system and that is it. The cam will then be able to be seen um, from a distance, as in outside your current network. Now in order to, that you can see outside your current network, you will need to do the following. 
Right, in order to configure your, to see your cam outside of your internet network inside your house, say for example if you had your camera at a remote position, just your office or your home, and you're away from that area, what you would need to do is this, the following. Go to DSN service settings, do not change any of this here, it's not necessary. Um, this is the external address for the for remote viewing. So I'll copy this address and open it up in a fresh bar. You will then see exactly the same uh, opening. Pop in username of admin and you're up and running again. Now, what you need to do if you've got an app, an Android app or a iPhone app, is use this, which is the actual physical address, as your login. So that will be the external login for this camera. As you can see, it's 92. 236-145 yours might be different we can see how it's on port 83 and then you'll be able to link it to your camera from an external point and not from just a wireless network that you're um, using currently there is also other functions that you can use with this camera which is um, an FTP service setting which is similar to the, the mail service setting which will allow you to upload any images to a server of your own choice uh, whether it's something that you've got on your website or alter any alternative there's also an MSM setting which I'm not really going to go into any much detail at this point um, once you've got everything running and everything's perfectly fine I would always suggest that you click on the backup and, and restore settings so you can get a backup of the settings that you've, you've perfected in order that if the device goes down you can just uh, find that file and you'll be up and running again quite quickly. Okay well thank you for watching the uh, setting up and demo of your cam for hopefully from acetoys.eu and um, please have a look on the website and if there's any other pro products that you enjoy or, or want to buy, contact us and we're, we're only happy to oblige. Thank you. Goodbye.